Mumbai City FC finished outside the playoff positions last season. This season, they become the fastest team to win the Hero ISL League Shield with two games remaining. That was the highlight of last week, ladies and gentlemen, along with the fact that there are a lot of other teams that have suddenly thrown their hat into the mix for the qualification into the top six. Odisha FC seemed like they might sneak in at the last moment again. ATK Mohan Bagan, there's a few doubts over their qualification now. And Bengaluru FC continue that dreamlike run, culminating with that win over KBFC at their last home game. Good evening, guys. My name is Suyash and I welcome you to another episode of the Let's Football Live show. We will be joined today by Sir John Helm, all the way from England, and Mr. Eric Partelou. So come on right in, gentlemen, and let's hear what you have to say about all the action that went down last week but first of all i'd just like to welcome sir john back into the show hello sir good to see you once again it's been a long while hasn't it namaste everybody in india g'day eric uh, it's been a long <laughs> while yeah delighted to be back and i'm in great form here in yorkshire where the sun is shining we should be playing cricket here today actually it's lovely <laughs> Yeah, you're not, you're not a half-bad cricketer yourself, uh, I hear, Sir John. But let's stick to the football now because we will dig straight into it. Uh, last season, like I said, Mumbai City FC finished outside the playoff positions. They've now become the fastest ever winners of the Hero ISL League Shield. Just what has changed from last season, Sir John? Could you sum it up for us, the turnaround? Well, I think the simplest answer is the inheritance. Uh, when Des Buckingham took over a squad last year, it was full of players that he didn't particularly, once he didn't want them, but he hadn't signed them. This year, if you look at the recruitment, it was fantastic. He brought in the best player from the previous season in Greg Stewart. Towards the back end of last season, he brought in the likes of Laliander Changte. Uh, he brought in Noguera this year as well. Good signing from uh, Goa. He brought in Pereira Diaz. He really had the players he wanted. And of course, Apuya came last season as well. So all of a sudden, he had the tools with which to work. And boy, as he worked with them. Uh, I know there's a, from going back to 2019, the Under-20 World Cup in Poland, uh, he's meticulous in his planning. Uh, he, as I say, he did better with the New Zealand than anybody had done in the past at any FIFA tournament. And he's transferred that ability to the squad of players that he wanted. Without question, they have the best squad of players in the whole of the ISL. That's interesting, Sir John. Uh, just a quick bit on what was he like when you initially got to know him, since you mentioned that you've known him since uh, way back then. Is he the same kind of uh, person and coach now? Do you see the same person? Oh, very, very much. He's a, he's a delight to deal with because he's very media conscious. He, uh, I'm sure Eric would agree. He's always willing to do an interview before, after a games. But when he's away from that, when he's looking after his players, I've seen him around the hotel. Uh, and when I said meticulous, that's exactly the right word for him. He never played the game, you know, professionally. Uh, but he started out as a coach at a very young age. I mean, about 17 or 18 or something. And then, of course, he's gone on in Australia as well. And briefly in England with Mark Hughes, he assisted him down at uh, Stoke City. Uh, but he's just the same guy, but he's very concentrated. He's very focused. He knows exactly what he wants from every single player. And Eric will tell you that players do need sometimes a bit of guidance. They need to know what the manager wants from them. Des is brilliant at that. Uh, and isn't he, Eric? Because uh, the Indian players have really thrived under Des Buckingham this season. It feels, feels like he's brought the best out of them, in particular, a certain Lalianzwala Chang. So before we get into the next question, let's have a little look at how his season has been so far on this VT. He's got the speed of a greyhound. He will turn on the burners for five minutes and set up a goal. In full flight, there are uh, very few footballers who can excite and entertain like Lalanzuala Changte can. So Changte, please keep doing what you do so beautifully. My name is Lalanzuala Changte. I'm playing for Mumbai City FC and I'm a winger. My 
my family have supported me since the first day. Without them supporting me, like um, I would be nothing. Chante. Chante with that left. What I've really enjoyed about working with Chante is his ability to really work on his game on and off of the field. Uh, he's a very um, bright young man uh, and he's very keen to learn. He's going to get kicked. People are going to try and knock him off his stride. He'll bounce back up, he'll get at you again, and he will get down the wing. And that's what excites fans. His strength is his speed, and he can shoot from distance. And also, he's very important for us. Because he's all left-footed, he chops and he changes, he's direct, and he really works well with the players at Mumbai City. I want to take every day as a challenge, and how far I can go. I will try to give my best, uh, dedicate every day to, to reach my goal, ultimate goal. And Chankri is just an example, fun. isn't he, Eric? Because it's not like clubs were queuing up for his signature last season when he moved to Mumbai City FC. He was still very much a hit or miss player. But the player we mm. saw before he moved to Mumbai and player we see now vastly different. What do you put that down to? Yeah, I think Des obviously identified him quite long before that. And if you remember Chennai in, he was kind of held back a little bit the last couple of weeks before he did move. They weren't playing him. He was on the bench. And it looked like a, a similar scenario you see across the world where someone's not re-signing for their club and they're not playing them because they, they don't trust them or they want them to re-sign. Um, and it, it just worked out really well for him. He moved across and was a bit part player, just trying to find his way. And he showed glimpses of, of real quality. And he scored a really good goal that hit the crossbar and came down. And how many times have we seen that in the last couple of weeks from him? He just he has that short back lift and, and, and knows how, how to finish a football. What I like about him is that, you know, there was massive onus on Bippen the last season. Um, and bippen has gone a little bit quiet in the last couple of weeks. But it's only because Chante is now the outlet. So when Jahul gets the ball, he opens up on that right foot and he looks for, for Chungte. And it's almost like give him the ball and he'll do the rest. But in terms of what Des has done in terms of developing his, his, his style, I don't think he's done too much. He just, he just sat there and managed him and just said to him and gave him confidence to go and express himself. Um, and he's got the players around him like Diaz that come short and look for one-twos and things like that. And we're excited to see him play. He's got 10 goals, five assists. I, I think he's probably going to be you know, the, the golden ball winner this year in terms of being the best player. He, he's definitely got my vote. Well, that's a, that's a big shout, Eric. And just beyond Chante as well, you see the likes of Bipin, you see the likes of Vignesh, Dakshinamurti. Even when they make mistakes on the pitch, they don't seem to go back into a shell. So does that have something to do with how Des Buckingham has really liberated uh, his players, especially the Indian players, giving them the confidence to go and express themselves on the pitch? Yeah, it's mentality. And, you know, when they went and played in the Asian Champions League, they went to a different level of expectation and you're playing against better players, better teams. When you go and get that experience and you bring it back to India, you're full of confidence. And I'm sure that their pattern of play is the major part in their training sessions about how they like to play. Um, but having Des Buckingham for that second season was the best piece of business that, you know, that they ever did in Mumbai City. Just keeping Des there, keeping that evolution going, um, and as John said, you're bringing in players like Greg Stewart and Diaz and Noguera. Uh, you know, you're changing the whole the whole dynamic of, of the team going forward. But defensively, they look quite quite strong. And I still don't think they're settled on a, on a left back position. Um, and also the central defence, you know, partnership. Who's going to play? Roston Griffiths or Matata Four with Metab Singh? So there's still room for improvement for Mumbai City, which is a scary thing. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a good segue, Sir John, to now move into Mumbai City FC's next match, which is on the 15th versus Bengaluru FC. Now, this is what the scenario is a little bit like. Bengaluru FC on an emotional high after winning their last game against Kerala Blasters FC in what is called the Southern Rivalry. Mumbai City FC just having sort of wrapped up their celebrations after sealing the League Shield after their win over FC Goa. Is that the one game where you would probably think that if there's any game which Mumbai City FC could potentially slip up in, it would be that one, just given how the circumstances are lining up. You might think that way. I don't, actually. I think that the massive incentive is to become the first team to go through the entire season unbeaten. So I don't think that they will allow 
uh, anything to creep into the head that, you know, just lets them to be a little bit relaxed on the day. I just don't see that happening. They've got the motivation there. They've broken all the records. You know, they, they've won just about every match. They've scored more goals than anybody's ever scored before, more points than anybody else. So the motivation will be, right, let's go on from here now. But they are coming up against a team that they thrashed. The last game I actually saw live in India was that 4-0 game in Mumbai when Bengaluru were awful. Simon Grayson was mortified that evening by their performance. And he will use that as motivation for his team. As you say, they're on a fantastic run at the moment. Really great run. I'm delighted to have seen that as well, because they were the underachievers in the first half of this season. No question about it. Uh, but they uh, are on a massive high, of course, uh, at the moment. So this is going to be one of the games of the season. And they will actually want to put out of their mind that previous visit to Mumbai. So both teams have got colossal motivation. But don't think for a minute that Mumbai will relax. They won't. I just want your two cents on that as well, Eric, as an ex-player. How do you approach that kind of a game? If you've already wrapped <laughs> up the league in your champions, what kind of mentality are you going with? Uh, look, if there was, you know, a loss in that column for Mumbai City, I could see Des resting a few players and letting the boys enjoy the moment and having a few beers and relaxing and possibly staying in goal for a couple of days as well. Uh, but when you've got something like that to achieve, you don't get that opportunity. Um, John will tell you it's happened very rarely in football. You know, Arsenal, you, everyone knows that famous story of Arsenal doing it in, in the English Premier League. I can't recall anybody else doing it. I'm sure John will. Um, but there's there's something that's, you know, it's something nice in the air that you feel at Mumbai City are creating. And will they get another opportunity to actually achieve going a season unbeaten? I don't think they will. I think next season they could lose the first game of the season and be off their game and then we forget about it. So whilst they're on this run, they, they have to put their full strength team out with the same endeavour and try and get three points. And now I must ask Sir John, since you mentioned it, Eric, uh, anyone apart from Arsenal, Sir John, who's gone invincible in the <laughs> of association football? Well, there was a club called Preston North End back in the 20s and 30s who were known as Invincible. Huddersfield Town, who won the title three years in a row, were. But Arsenal's was the, the first real achievement of going through a season uh, only the time. It just doesn't happen, does it? You know, there was a period where Liverpool and Leeds United just about beat each other once in the season and otherwise they were un untouchable as well. Uh, but it's a fantastic achievement. And I, I, personally, I hope they go on and do it. And that's nothing against anybody else. I'm, I'm a good friend of Simon Grayson's and congratulations to him on the way they've turned their season around, which was horrendous. It's looking horrendous at one stage. Uh, mm. But, you know, no... I think both sides have got massive incentive, but I can't see any complacency whatsoever creeping in with Mumbai City. Yeah, Rick, they don't call him a football encyclopedia for nothing, do they? <laughs> <laughs> but let's go back to you now, Eric, and let's speak about <laughs> let's speak a bit about FC Goa now. They have mm. Chennai and FC and Bengaluru FC remaining to play, and only two wins are going to guarantee them a place in the top six. It could all potentially come down to that game against BFC on the twenty third. What is the significance yeah. of that encounter? Yeah, look, I think, you know, four points will, will get them 100% qualification. I think 31 points will be the cutoff. 33 is the cutoff right now. That's going to drop down in the next few games. I think they'll beat Chennai. There's no problems there. I think Chennai's season's done, obviously, and FC go and need the points more. Going to Bangalore, um, that could be very interesting because we know that the Bengaluru, if they... As everyone expects, if they go and lose to Mumbai, they have that game against them. And it really could come down to that one. And that's what makes it so exciting, this this new format, is that every team, you know, we've got seven seven teams now, that the possibility of being in the final couple of uh, positions in that top six. So FC Goa and, you know, Bengaluru got some great history, obviously played in that final against each other a few years back. Um you know, I, I'm pretty sure that FC Goal, if they get three points against Chennai, they would they'd almost be qualified. But you don't want to go into that last game wondering what if and waiting for the results. So it's an important game, that last one. Yeah. Now a bit about Odisha FC, Sir John. It felt like they were on course to comfortably qualify for the top six. 
they did a bit for self immolation job in the middle and now they seem like they're back on track especially after that win against hyderabad fc in their last game and helped by the fact that fc goa also lost the last game would you now suddenly pick them as favorites perhaps over fc goa or bengaluru fc considering that uh, their remaining games come against northeast united fc and jamshedpur fc who aren't really having the best runs themselves Well, it's a very good question, and the simple answer would be to say yes, of course, because you couldn't ask for better opposition than the bottom two, could you? Yeah. Going to Guwahati to face a northeast side, which must be demoralised, they've had a horrendous season, and then Jamshedpur at home. So you'd think they'd win that one, but Jamshedpur, I've noticed, do seem to have improved a little bit. I'm looking from afar, as you realise at the moment, but I do think they've improved a little bit, and I think. I think I go way back to the very first match of the season that they played when they won 2-1 against Jamshedpur who led until added time they scored twice in added time that will be on Jamshedpur's mind so they might give them a harder game than they think but I think the Odisha Eric might disagree with me would possibly settle for four points bearing in mind Bengaluru play over in that final game so they're going to take points off one another So I don't think that they would be totally dissatisfied if they took four points from the two games. Well, one six, obviously, that goes without saying. Uh, they are in the driving seat in that sense, but I've, I have had a bit of a hunch from the start of the season that they might not just make it. So who knows? It's a thrilling finish. You want to weigh in there, or there, Eric? Uh, you agree with Sir John? Yeah, Odisha has definitely got the easier run. Um, but you know these teams that are finishing their their, their season, they're looking forward to their holidays. Uh, they've had a tough old year. People are playing for contracts, which means they're playing with a bit of fear, and that's what makes those two teams dangerous and down the bottom. When you're playing with fear, you go through the wall. You go through 110. percent It might throw a freak result out. They're they're the hard games to play against because absolutely, uh, John's right. Four points would be a great achievement. Everyone's expecting six points there. Um, and Odisha, although they got that win the other week, they you know got them restarted. They haven't really put a run of games together. If they want to get themselves in that six, they have to try and win those two games for sure. I think they have the easier run, and I do think they'll pick up four points at least. Okay, uh, we now move on to ATK Mohan Bagan, uh, Eric and Sir John, and it's time now that we start building up to the derby, the second derby of the season. Of course, mm. when they played each other for the first time this season, there was a lot at stake. Both teams were just beginning their seasons. Quite a different picture now. But as it all turns out, it might just come down to the derby on the 25th for ATK Mohan Bagan's qualification because they do need two wins out of three to qualify. And if East Bengal FC have that motivation to get uh, one over ATK Mohan Bagan to prevent them from qualifying into the top six. It'll be a very, very tasty encounter. So let's just take a look at the significance of what the derby really means in that context. In this VT, take a look. This is the match, the Kolkata derby. It is east against west. This is the biggest derby in the whole of Asia. Across the Hero Indian Super League, all the other nine clubs also look forward to this derby. Every single time I talk about the derby, I've got goosebumps. For our Bengali people. इनके लिए फेस्टिवल है। We want to continue this winning streak। डर्बी में गोल मारने का मेरा ड्रीम है। And Eric Manveer Singh said that for people in Kolkata, the derby is like a festival. Could you just put the context of that match in front of us? Yeah, I've never played in one, obviously, but you speak to the players that have, and I'm talking about you know going back 20, 30 years as well. It's uh... It's more than a game of football, and if you lose that game, you don't come out of your house for a week. It's as simple as that. You know, derby games massive up in Kolkata, but that could have great significance on the result from a neutral point of view. You know, if ATK Mohanbagan lose tonight and they have to play their next game and then go into that last game having to win, it's it's going to be great viewing because East Bengal they can play spoilers, and although Constantine's led them to five wins already this season. Their best finish, possibly in the Hero Indian Super League so far. If they can get a result, or if they can win that last game, it just gives that club, you know, more happiness to their fans. And I've been to a lot of games this year at the Salt Lake, and you can just see there's not a lot to cheer about. The way that they've been playing, not really exciting. Um, and you know, with the the whole transfer uh, ban activity, not getting Jake Jervis in, you know, that was a bit of a a bit of a farce for them. So this could end their season on a high. So expect that game to mean something, regardless. Yeah, 
So John, why do you call that the biggest derby in Asia? We heard you say that in the VT, but what's the reason you say that? Um, history. Uh, you go back a long, 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 long time, even before I was born, to the first meetings of these two clubs, where the, the fact that they can draw 120,000 to the Salt Lake Stadium in the older days, well, 70,000 nowadays, that tells you it's massive. Uh, and there aren't many other uh, Asian countries which have two clubs of such standing over so many, many years. So that's why I said that. But as I'm speaking to you from England at the moment, I don't think you'd mind me likening it in a funny way to what's happened with Liverpool and Everton, who met this week. And yeah. although right, exactly. Everton have just had a rejuvenating success against Arsenal, when it came to this one against Liverpool, psychologically the edge, as it is with ATK, Mohan Bagan is there. They're so used to winning. East Bengal haven't beaten them, not even drawn with them since they came into the Hero Indian Super League. So psychologically, even though ATK have not been at their best this year, I think I'm right in saying there have been only three goals draws in the whole season and ATK and Bomba have been mm -hmm. involved in all three. So they haven't fired, have they? Liston hasn't really fired this season. Some of the other players haven't as well. But when it comes to it, on Derby Day, for some strange, unaccountable reason, ATK and Bomba always but always seem to come out on top yeah it's it's the mystical nature of that encounter isn't it something about mm. those kind of games that just uh, bring the best out in players and staying on the topic of atk mohan bagan now eric you mentioned that they have their game lined up against hyderabad fc later today you want to make uh, give us a quick prediction for how you think that game's going to go tonight Look, two two wins away from home for ATK Mohan Bagan. And as John said, they haven't been convincing. They haven't been able to score multiple goals in a lot of games. They had that big blowout down in Kerala 5-2, but the rest of the games have been really close. One and two ones and one nils and haven't been convincing. And I think Hyderabad, Manolo Marquez is probably going to, you know, get them pretty motivated for this one because they know that that's a hard opponent to possibly meet in that top six. So... I'm going to go with Hyderabad tonight. I know that ATK and Malmagan need the points, but their away form hasn't been convincing. I haven't seen them perform that well since that Kerala game. So I think it might just be a little bit too much for them. So, John, you want to weigh in over there? Yes, I was nodding there at every word that Eric says. I don't always agree with my mate. Uh, <laughs> but I think he's spot on, on, on this one. Uh, I think that uh, Hyderabad are the second best team in the league. They were the best team in the league, statistic tellers last season. Uh, they've had a bit of an in and out time, haven't they, really? Maybe, I don't know, Bart and Siverio never seem to play together. It's either one or the other. Uh, personally, I'd like to see them on the pitch at the same time, uh, a few times. But uh, Manolo's got it right, basically, hasn't he? And I just, I, I can't see them losing that one, to be fair with you. Okay, noted, duly noted, gentlemen. I think uh, that's a nice note for us now to wrap up our show today. Uh, the Let's Football Live show, of course, always sees experts uh, on a rotating basis, but always good to see Sir John Helm joining us uh, on the show because it's not often that we've seen him this season. Always a pleasure, Sir John. So thank you for joining us uh, all the way from England. And uh, thank you to Sir Eric Partlew as well. Enjoying your off day, I see. Looking crisp in that white shirt of yours. Uh, hope you have a good evening after this. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Thanks, boys. Pleasure. Right. Uh, and to everyone who tuned in, thanks for watching another episode of the Let's Football Live show, ladies and gentlemen. Our build-up to the Kolkata Derby will continue, as will our build-up towards the 19th of February, which is when Mumbai City FC are going to lift the league shield at the Mumbai Football Arena after their match against East Bengal FC. It promises to be a quite the spectacle. So do tune in for that. And we'll see you on the other side in another Let's Football Live show. Take care. And Jamshedpur have won the Hero ISL.